Hello and welcome back. So I'm about to get started on the painting portion of this Kingdom Death Monster project. Uh, I did a video which you may have seen already if you're interested in Kingdom Death Monster that discussed the uh, the issues related to assembling of the miniatures themselves. But as you can see, they have been assembled. So, um, although there may be issues, they are not insurmountable. And they are done now. As far as painting goes, the watcher is going to represent the biggest challenge here, I think. Uh, this is one half of the cloak because it really is just one giant cloak and here is the other half I'm not going to stick them together because they have a masking agent along this seam line here to keep the primer off of it because I'm, I'm going to do something I almost never do and that is do some painting prior to assembly but in this case it would nearly be impossible to do otherwise unless you really didn't care so much about what the things under the cloak look like and since I do want to have uh, some detail to all of that it's going to require that I do these two pieces separately but I don't think I'm going to start with that uh, I'm going to warm up a bit and I am going to do uh, the white lion now the white lion um, required a fair bit of uh, final prep, uh, mostly in the form of sanding its flanks. Uh, this is, so the rear half here, the ass end, you've got a tail, two uh, flank halves, and two feet that are all different pieces. But really the main thing is these three, tail, uh, left half, right half, um, when assembled and then attached to the front half, uh, it's really difficult to get those seams to align perfectly. So there's a fair amount of sanding that needed to go on in order to make that work. Um, and maybe even a little more before I get started. Um, but I think I'm going to prime it first and we'll see because that the, the primer tends to bring out the uh, gray primer in particular it tends to bring out all the seams. You get to see them all and then that will sort of tell me where I need to go from there. So uh, it's going to get a gray primer as this is supposed to be a white lion. Uh, and I've decided what I'm going to do with regards to the white is to actually do uh, extremely light ochre um, that goes all the way up to white. Ooh, I see another seam here at the head that I need to fill a bit. And that's probably going to take some green stuff. Uh, anyway, so I've got some ochres from the uh, War Colors line. That this is uh, ochre three, ochre two, ochre one, and I think this may end up being my uh, darkest shadow, uh, mid tone, and highlight, and then I will go extreme highlight with white to actually give it that look of white. Now, um, I'm using these colors because that will tend to uh, give it that feel of actually being a lion, but it will still be um, incredibly pale uh, and almost white. And one of the things I really want to be able to do is sort of invoke, you know, whatever the uh, interpretation of these things is supposed to be. And in the online store, the description of the white lion says that uh, there are gold flecks that can appear when it is in the sun. So I am considering adding some 
uh, neutral metallic to the final highlights. I've got a Vallejo um, metallic medium that I can use and we'll see if I can do that without making it gaudy. Um, and if I just if I leave it to the final highlights then perhaps that will that will work out. So that's where I'm going with that. Uh, and then I think once I finish that piece, because all of these kind of need to be done separately, there's no, uh, oh, except for, I didn't even bring these out, the survivors. Uh, the survivors could all be done as a group, as they are primarily uh, flesh tones, although uh, this guy in particular, the guidelines that I'm using for him sort of have him with a, uh, a kind of a unique flesh tone, so he might get done separately. But otherwise, uh, these all will have... It's the cat playing with uh, popcorn in the back. Uh, these all have the same basic, you know, just basic wrappings and flesh tones. And so they, they might be done as a group. And even this guy, once I get his flesh tones done, I could do the rest of them along with uh, the other three because then it's just his wrappings and his lantern and the rock or whatever it is he's carrying. Uh, at some point, I'm going to have to actually read up on this game and find out what the hell is going on. My guess is, and uh, I literally have no idea but just from looking at these, it looks like uh, these are people stuck in some sort of a nightmare dreamscape. Am I right? You tell me in the comments. <laughs> anyway, I'll be back in a bit once I get some work done. All right. Uh, I went ahead and primed everything. And some of the models are going to require a little bit more cleanup. As I said, once you get the primer on, you can usually see the seam lines better. Um, and some of them on these guys are really, really fine. So uh, seeing them in when it's just plastic uh, is tough. But once you get the primer on, there they are. And once I, and just so that you know it's being worked on, there is the Phoenix, just a little glimpse of that. Um, but as you can see, I've gotten some paint on the White Lion, and he certainly looks more gold right now. Uh, and this is just two colors so far. Uh, the shadow color of Ochre 3 from War Colors, which you can still see uh, on the underside. And then the next step being Ochre 2, which was a lighter version. And it's mostly airbrushed from the top and then in from the side uh, and then the next color is of course going to be ochre one and that's going to I'm going to go in and uh, more carefully define the muscle structure and some other highlights and at, the, at that point I'm going to have to go in with a brush and start bringing out those highlights by hand uh, and then after that uh, will be the white. But as you can see, it's already fairly light, although, you know, it's not a, it's, it's, it's actually not a bad sort of lion color right now. Like if you were going to do uh, a real lion, then these actually, these colors would be a great place to start. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to continue on with that and get the airbrushing done. I'm going to try out a new show. Uh, I watch a lot of a lot of video <laughs> when I'm uh, when I'm working. Anything, the best things to watch are things that are very talky that don't require a lot of watching. Um, so we'll see if this one works. And that's it for the moment. Uh, let me get this get some more paint on here, and then we'll talk a little bit more about it. See you in a bit. So I've gotten a couple more highlight steps. Uh, I did move into the white and I did start using brush, especially in the main. Uh, the main really required some overbrushing, is really what I did, which is uh, taking the edge of the brush 
with the highlight color and sort of going over it like this. It's very much like doing a dry brush, but slower and wetter. <laughs> uh, then I mixed up a kind of a baby poo color in a very thin wash. And I did that with uh, this Ochre 3 and Brown 5. Brown 5 is essentially just uh, raw umber. And uh, I started defining some of the harder shadows and washing it into the, uh, the main. But directed washing, not over the whole thing, but I really wanted to make sure I just kept it in the recesses and didn't tint the uh, whiteness of the mane. And have been using that to kind of define the musculature and, you know, pulling out some of those really cool sculpted details that are there. And really just, you know, provide some contrast. And now I gotta think about what I'm gonna do with his mouth and claws and other things and I don't know I don't know that yet so I'm gonna go give that some thought and, uh, and then I'll, I'll come back so at this point uh, it is mostly done I have not done the base I'm actually gonna wait on the bases uh, to complete the painting on all of the minis uh, I find that you do a better job of, of making them all uh, cohesive that way. But as you can see, I did the face. Uh, I outlined the eyes with a mix of that brown five, which is uh, raw umber, uh, with a little black to give it some darkness. <clears throat> And it's almost like a mascara, but if you look at lions, they actually have that, which is really, really interesting. Uh, the iris color is uh, uh, ochre too. And then just, you know, the eye is dotted with black. Uh, the mouth has a couple of different colors, like the, the core um, interior color is... Uh, brown 2, which is a red brown. And then I used flesh, and these are again all uh, uh, war colors designations. So flesh 3, which is uh, almost orangey flesh on the tongue. And uh, then I washed that all with a mix of red four and five, which looks like that. And just wash that in there over the teeth and over the <clears throat> over the gums and over the tongue. Uh, and then I pulled out the teeth, which to me look like shark teeth. So I was going for very kind of bright white colors. Um, but actually I use the warm gray two and one primarily to pull those out. And this is a, he's a weird guy. Oh, his, uh, his claws also got that same, uh, black brown that I did. It's also around the mouth, uh, and then the, the mascara, as I mentioned earlier. Then I went back and I started doing more of that kind of baby poop color that I mixed up to pull out the definition on the muscles some more. And, but again, as I said, at this point, this is pretty much done. So I'm gonna move on to, I'm actually gonna clean up the survivors some more because they, they require a little bit more uh, work before I can get to painting them. So I'm gonna have to do some liquid green stuff and some sanding and what have you. So I'm gonna go do that. I don't, I'll probably come back for at least one more time on this video and uh, talk a little bit more about what I'm doing. So I will see you in a bit. So I went ahead and did clean up on the survivors. They are all ready to paint and I will begin working on them tomorrow. Uh, with any luck, I'll actually be able to complete them tomorrow, but we'll see. I don't know. 
Um, I did do the antelope, the screaming antelope, with his uh, viscera encrusted chest area. <laughs> um, I hadn't intended to do this. It was one of those things I set down the uh, survivors and I glanced over it at, at it and went, you know what, this is very similar to the lion in some respects. Um, so maybe I should do that. And I just kind of went ahead and did it. Um, it is an interesting piece, but probably one of the least detailed of all of the models I'm doing. Um, not my favorite. Uh, in terms of sculpting, it's it's pretty basic, but it is interesting. Uh, you know, he looks like he's in mid vivisection. Um, but I gotta say, I, I've been sort of staring at my lion like all day, and I, I'm super happy with him. And I did abandon the plan for adding metallic uh, to the highlight because uh, the final coloration has that hint of gold that I was going for and I, I really had my doubts as to whether or not the metallic was going to do anything except make it look less organic so uh, I went ahead and just stuck with what I did and, and I'm pleased so so there we go but that's gonna do it for this video um, I will be recording some more video tomorrow and I will just keep doing these as uh, as I work on the project. At some point I'll even get to the Phoenix, so that should be interesting. But that's gonna end it for today, and thank you for watching, and I will talk to you all later.